Robinson Show, we are back with Bobby Blaze Smedley. Bobby! Hey, what's happening? Hey. Yes, I'm here. How are you, my friend? How are you? Ex-pro wrestler, uh, author, and podcaster. Yes, sir. I'm doing good. I hope you guys are doing well, too. That sure as hell wasn't any elevator music on that hard break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no Damn. elevator music. No elevator yeah, music. Good to have, hey. Thanks. Let me head back on the show, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming back. I remember I felt bad because I remember last time you called, we had like prank callers, and I was like outside calling them on my phone, telling them to go f themselves <laughs> while while Bobby was on. But I was like, oh my god, I, I don't want Bobby to think I'm rude. So I messaged you. I'm like, no. yeah, we had we had somebody sp- trolling us, trolling us last time. We do get that every now and then. So oh, I'm sure, man. And I didn't take it that way. Oh hell, it's business as usual, you know, and. and- there's always those haters out there, you know, but I, that's the thing. I, I knew something was up, but you, uh, professionally, I knew, you know, hey, things happen, man. Don't worry about that. It's all good. I do love, too, over the summer, Bobby, my sons were up and my, my middle son loves WWE. And my oldest actually got into it because we started watching every week. But he would ask me questions. And I'm like, I don't know. My buddy Bobby was a pro wrestler. And I would ask you questions. He would ask me and you would answer them. And he just thought that was the coolest. He thought that was the coolest oh, thing. Oh, cool. So I well, of course, that. man. If, if I see the message, I'm going to answer it. You no know, more likely, especially from someone you know I've kind of been acquainted with, and et cetera, yeah. uh, podcast. Uh, and it, you know, but this thing, anyone has an interest in a business, and I can you know, tell them you know one way or the other. And I think you asked me about a couple people that uh, had I met this person, that person. I I, I can't recall the names, but yes. anyway, I knew one of them. He did. I had work. I think it was Dustin. I had met and worked with and knew yes. the way back when. I think the other one was Kurt. I could be wrong on that, but anyway, I think so. I, uh, Kurt Angle and I hadn't met him, but I'm like, you know, here, here's the here's what I know, you know. Yeah. So I'm not going to bullshit you. I'm just going to tell you the truth, and that was, uh, I think he asked me about Dustin Rhodes. I could be wrong on that. And yes. was Kurt Angle, and it was 50-50, you know. Yeah. And I do, I love to, um, because I'm a, I, I, I try to explain to them, you know, like these guys who are playing bad guys, like Samoa Joe, he's a, he's a jerk on, on TV, but he's a, he's probably a great guy behind the scenes and they actually sub the YouTube channel for WWE and they see like, yeah, the, the guys that he's, uh, being an a-hole to and, and they see them hanging out behind <laughs> the scenes and just playing video games and like laughing. And that's yeah. cool. That's cool to break down that wall and, and like show you like, yeah, yeah they're not. My experience was, especially, you know, early on, um, I always cheer with the heels or, you know, bad guys. If, if no one's smartened up by now, I mean, you know, hell, it's out there. It's like, you know, every day on the internet, et cetera. But um, my experience was, guys, I got it. Once I got into the business stuff, the the heels or the bad guys always were the nicest and stuff. And people, man, they were just, you know, sometimes, and again, that's not dig for any baby faces or, or good guys. I'm just saying that um, sometimes, especially back in the day, you know, maybe a babyface bought into his own propaganda or uh, into his own headlines or what have you, and they believe, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm this, and I'm great, and I'm winning. Well, you know, the thing is, there's a heel out there, a bad guy putting you over, making you look good. And I found out as I got into the business that a lot of times the guys that I, that I had cheered for, because I, I, oddly enough, I cheered for the heels, but um, – too. They were some of the nicest people I'd ever met, man. Yeah. And that's kind of the way it is. I, again, nowadays, we're very thinking being exposed as it is with the network and, and social media, uh, internet, et cetera. Um, you know, I'm, I, behind the scenes type stuff, you know, you can see, okay, he's actually just, um, that's the character he is. I yeah. think someone tweeted me today about something. Sadly, the, the wrestling business it used to be on TV as professional wrestling. Now it's just a, a a television company that has professional wrestling as a backdrop, you know, and then that's not big towards anything anyone watches or anything. I'm just saying it's so, it's so much out there. Like you said, your son can see behind the scenes that, you know what, Samoa Joe's probably an all right guy. He's just sitting there playing his video games or, or, you know, whatever. So yeah. I, I anyway. respect the guy too, that can go out and like be booed by an entire college, yeah. by an entire arena and just go on with his business like that. That's cool. Oh me. yeah. Like that's guts. Yeah, he knows he's got a job to do. You know, yeah. we all do. What you know, and I'm not talking about job like putting someone over or whatever. But you you got a role to play, if you will, or what have you. But he, you know, those guys know. Okay, this is this is business only. I'm going to go out here and take care of this. 
And, of course, there's going to be the rare person that falls through the crack that, you know, hey, well, this guy may be a prick or this girl may be a real bitch or whatever. Uh, most of them, though, especially once you get to those top levels, they've already worked their way through the independence or they've worked overseas. Yeah. They've dusted their ass. 99% of them are top grade athletes, uh, performers, if you will, and, and they know the role. You know, that's mm, the whole thing. It's yeah. just like the Rock used to say, well, know your role, Check call people jabronis, whatever. Yeah. And most of those, at that level, you know your role, man. So when they go out there, they just um, elevate it. You know, they, 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 once the cameras roll, they know. Yeah. Uh, this is my personality times 100. You know, it's no different uh-huh. than it being a podcast. Sometimes I think about it. Say things on my podcast, you know. Um, I know that I, I'm, I'm just out there going like, okay, we're going for this certain uh, old school market, if you will. And so I'll say, okay, let's let's cure uh, let's curate it to this. Let's let's do that. Yeah. Um, who would be number one in this? Well, you know, maybe ninety five percent of people don't agree because I go for something a little bit different, as does my podcast partner uh, Jeremy and, and our YouTube guy Tex. We just kind of put something together that's a little bit different than what everyone else expects. But, but you know, again, we know, you know, hey, there's a market out there for that. And there's so many podcasts out there, you know. So uh, that's the thing, the same thing with professional wrestling. Nowadays, it's, I think it's a great time to be a professional wrestling fan because you have so many products out there. But I think some of these, not some, a majority of the people that are making, whether it be WWE, uh, AEW, the, the NWA, or, or, or Impact, what have you, uh, Ring of Honor, whatever, whatever you're watching, uh, more power to you because there's so many different products out there. You can now choose, like, you know what, this is what I like to watch each week. Yeah. And um, and the performers know at that level, hey, I've got a job to do, and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. They busted their ass to get to that level, and I respect that. And I, and I think a lot of fans, uh, whether you be just an average fan or a really hardcore fan, I think the fans understand this guy really, or girl, uh, busted her ass to get to that level. So, yeah. I want to ask too, uh, Bobby. I, I don't know if you've had interactions with him, but is the Iron Sheik as crazy as he comes off? <laughs> Back in the day, I had a couple actually. Uh, I worked on, you know, when I worked way back when, when I worked for Smoky Mountain Wrestling, we just about to accept uh, uh, independent bookings as well. And, and if you can't tell by now, folks, I have a southern accent. <laughs> so uh, I worked a lot of shows down in, you know, Georgia and uh, Tennessee and, and and places like that. And at the time, she could just come off TV. So at the time, yeah, he seemed like, yeah, he, you don't fuck with the Sheik, man. I'm going to tell you, I used to, I worked a couple of shows and he was, he was still doing those damn uh, clubs back in the day. He would get those clubs up and do them, and he'd go out to the ring and challenge someone. And then, of course, he'd, he'd do the, the whole heel turn. He was just a damn nut back yes, in the day. Yes. Uh, I, I, that's been years and years ago. But he would also make you laugh so friggin' hard, man. Yes. Just, um, that what you saw is what you got back in the day. I can't speak for now. And I know that's there's a documentary out there that, that's really intense about him, and I guess done by a couple of his, quote, nephews, et cetera. But, um, yeah, he was a. You don't want to fuck with the sheik. I'll tell you that because he'll tell you, "Fuck you, jabroni." Good morning, good day, fuck you, jabroni, or whatever. You know, he's gonna tell you. Yeah, so, he is. He is a uh, special. He's, a, he's an animal. All of us. Definitely. His own. He if definitely. If you follow is. his Twitter, I know the other people's probably feeling in on it, but I guess he went to Twitter early on about you know it's it's really me, you jabronis. It's really me. Fuck you. You know. Fuck you. Uh, he fuck you, jabroni. Form or whatever form or what have you. So, he's, he's a wordsmith i'll give him that i'll give him that <laughs> yeah oh yeah if you can get the fuck you in there you know she's gonna drop it in there you know so, oh my god just uh, him and saying even rock put him over about getting the word jabroni out there uh contributed way back to the sheik using that back in the day you know so hell oh but my the god still putting you over after all those years using jabroni or what have you you know well there yeah. you go yeah, I wanted to say too. Uh, we had we had Jeremy on last season. He was a blast to talk to, and I just I love you guys. Oh, I cool. love you guys together. I love you. I love I love cool. Bell to with Bobby Blaze. We appreciate that. I appreciate uh, what happened was you know I was on on Jeremy's, uh, and if you don't know, you were talking about talking Jeremy uh, Vilmer, who's my uh, co-host of the Bell to Bell Bobby Blaze podcast. I actually done an interview uh, concerning professional wrestling on his uh, Geekish cast, and that's where you can find him out on Twitter. Yes. And then we did, about a few months later, we did another one where um, he just was interested in my books. 
and we'll give a cheap plug to that at another time or what have you. But um, so after that, I had a couple other people post up on a podcast, but then they never got back to me. So I said, Jeremy, hold on a second, you know, hot minute or what have you. Let me check to make sure that these other people, there was two of them, uh, and I didn't hear back. So I said, okay, Jeremy, let's go with it. And we just started, it just started from that. And I'm really appreciative because uh, like a lot of people, like the whole thing about a podcast is consistency and, you know, life happens, uh, shit happens, what have you. But through this whole, it's been about 15 months now. And uh, for the most part, we've tried to hit every week that we can. We usually record on a Sunday um, and, and we have fun with it. And it's, it's, it's um, I enjoy it because it makes me think. And, and also, I don't have to do a whole lot of research because at the beginning, whatever our topic is, I go from memory. Then I'll go and say, okay, hey, uh, Tex Johnson's our graphics, our YouTube guy, and you can follow us on YouTube. we got a good following there at tinyurl.com, BB, BB, uh, video. That's on YouTube. It's going real well. But that was just a fan that we picked up, and now he's part of our podcast crew. He's kind of behind the scenes. So between Jeremy and Tex, man, it's just one of those things where we put some things together we try to have fun with it. We hope fans like it, just like your show. People love the show because you're entertaining and you're funny. And you, you know what? You, you don't have to – if you drop an F-bomb, that's just the way some people, you know, speak or what have you. Um, you all get really good guests. We haven't really tried to get a lot of guests. We've had one. I'm in the works of getting a couple more. But, we're, again, we're not really trying to shoot for that. We're just, we're just doing our own thing in our own time. And whatever happens, happens, man. We're having fun with it. I love podcasts, though. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. You know. I love too. I love you guys was with the top ten, the top ten every week, and yeah. you guys did. Um, what did you guys just do? The top ten times wrestling went too far, and just the subjects you guys had was like necrophilia and stuff, and I was like, wow. I- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the most recent one. I appreciate you guys listening. I appreciate all the fans. Anyone who's into it. Um, yeah, we did uh, technical wrestlers last week, and this week we did the top ten times. And we, of course, we always throw in audible mentions. Uh, we have a free bird rule where sometimes once we get past 10, where the, if you remember back in the day, the fabulous free birds, there was three of them. So at any time, any two can wrestle and they throw in the third one. We do a thing where once in a while we'll throw in an 11th one saying, oh, you know, we, we're the free bird rule. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, we usually generally, you know, we start about 20, 25 different ideas of, of what when did wrestling really go too far you know and we get it down to about 10 of course like i said we mentioned all the mentions but not to give anything away if you haven't listened to it but i but i'm sure you have but so and i appreciate you if you did brother because you mentioned it yeah Man. we talked about you know hell there was there was there was a guy fucking is on tv and we want us to be suspended you know of our our belief you know that's wrestling you professional wrestling mm-hmm. you want to that that suspension of belief for just that 30 62 hour time period, whatever you're watching TV or at a, at a show, at a professional wrestling show, you want to be, you want that suspension of belief. But when you got those little vignettes and there's a guy, fucking a, a, a mannequin that's fucking supposedly dead and it's in a coffin, you know, that might have went too far, you know. Um, it, it, you know, when someone's hung or someone's uh, exploded yes. in a limousine and then they're back on TV the next week. Yeah. I mean, some of those things just went too far. Boss and man. We like to think that, you know. Boss man crucified um, was pretty nice to me. Yeah. So, um, but we have fun with it, too. That That's the thing. Yeah. Um, we understand, or I understand, I think Jeremy does, I think you do, and I think our fans do that. We have fun with the podcast itself, and we we make light of, okay, you know why you're tuning in each week. You want to be suspended for that that two- or three-hour period, whether you're watching WWE, whether you're watching uh, the new NWA, whether you're watching the new AEW or what have you. Um, but also, if it goes too far, eh, okay, you might as well be watching a fucking CSI. You can't just murder a CEO on national television and get by with it, then he's back on TV the next week. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. He just so fell off that building. Stuff, so. He just fell off a three-story building. How's he still alive? How's he still yeah. alive? <laughs> yeah. 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 You did mention yeah. your books, though, Bobby, and your books, when you sell them, they, they do fund your podcast, correct? Yes. What we do is we have, um, I have, uh, with Jeremy, the way he set it up, he put in tinyurl.com backslash blazebook1, and tinyurl.com backslash blazebook2. All my, both my books, and I have several short stories, 
um, that are available on Amazon. You can download them or you can order the print editions. And with the holidays coming up, now's a great time to order a print edition for a wrestling fan in your family or one of your friends. But Pin Me, Pay Me, Have Booth for Travel, that's my first book. It's got a hundred, it has 103 reviews, most of them very, very positive, but you'd be surprised what you can learn from a one or two or even a three, you know, uh, uh, point review. I'm really appreciative of all the reviews I've had, but you can get that uh, through Amazon. But if you want to help sponsor our uh, Bell to Bell with Bobby Blaze podcast, you can go through tinyurl.com Blaze Book One. If you want to sponsor, Buy the second book, which is I Kicked Out on Two, The Educational Wrestler. That's at tinyurl.com backslash uh, Blaze Book Two. And that's a little bit more outside the wrestling business. Once I, you know, I uh, wrote the first one, some people wanted some more stories. I put a couple of jokes in there. Um, I put some of my personal, more of my personal life, you know, how it is when you're, uh, for example, uh, as you get older, uh, back in the day when you go outside the, uh, like ring rats and stuff, you know, if you want to get a piece of ass, you just leave the building and there's usually girls out there waiting for you to either out to the ring or, or out behind the building or at the hotel room. Well, as you get older, shit, that stuff's hard to get, man. You gotta pay for it sometimes. You always pay it one way or the other, believe me. But, uh, you know, sometimes those opportunities aren't as available. So I told some stories like that and stuff, you know, uh, just fun, um, just, just fun stories. All again, I took some writer's liberties. What can you say? You know, it's all in, oh, God, I hate this word. Don't let me say it. I'm going to choke. I'm going to choke. <laughs> Entertainment. Um, anyway, right. um, yeah, yeah uh, you know what I'm saying. But anyway, yeah. yeah, thank you for letting me plug the books. And you can follow me on Twitter at BobbyBlaze744. That's my only social media. I don't have Facebook or Instagram. Uh, or anything else that I'm aware of. If I do, it's, it's not me. I've had people send me, hey, I saw this. Hey, I added you. Well, no, you didn't. I'm, <laughs> I'm only on Twitter at this only point, and I'm at Bobby Blaze 744 on there. And and I I love, here's what I love doing. I love promoting other authors' books. Um, I've come in contact with a lot of independent authors, indie authors, if you will. I love promoting and listening to you guys and other a podcast. I will always try my best to retweet any other podcast that I can, especially if it's someone whether I've listened to, come across, or befriended, you know. And um, that's what I use my Twitter for because it's professional wrestling, it's books, and it's podcasts. And I try to keep it positive because there's just so much, so much negative bullshit in our everyday in our lives anyway. And, and it's social media, so I try to be social and I try to let everyone know, hey man, you know what? Just be good to each other out there. Uh, show a little kindness, show a little love to each other. And if you can help promote someone else's book or someone else's podcast, someone else's wrestling promotion, or or just these wrestlers that are just, you know, um, something positive, man. That, that To me, that, that's what's all about because every day, as you guys probably know, as the people listening know, we deal with so much stuff, whether it be religion, political, uh, uh, local, national, just so much bullshit that you have to see every day that's the real world. It's yeah. okay sometimes if yeah. you know what, let's just fucking be positive. Let's, let's or, be good to each other. Let's, let's just get away from each that. other because not enough people are doing that. Yes, exactly, exactly. Let's just get away from that. Let's just be good to each other. Let's yeah. Just, let's just and what, enjoy what each other. What harm does it do, honestly? What harm does it do to send out a retweet to say, you know what, get these guys a listen. Listen to the Robin Slim show. Yeah. Uh, uh, listen to Morning Morosas. You know, uh, listen to the Bell to Bell Bobby Blaze. Listen to Jim Cornette talk, uh, uh, podcast. Whatever. I mean, I know Jim don't need all my, you know, my support. That's the one I listen. My favorite is Joe Rogan. That's what I've been listening to today. But again, I listen to a lot of different podcasts, you know, and I'm not going to sit there and put them all over. But some of those are on a big, huge number. You guys got a good thought too. But, you know, what does it hurt? Yes. To say, you know what, give these guys a listen. Yeah. Read this person's book. I downloaded, last week I downloaded two little uh, short stories for 99 cents each. A, another author got a hold of me, said, hey, would you be interested in doing this? And they, they their books, their short stories, rather, were 99 cents. I said, yeah, buy a couple of mine. I'll buy a couple of yours. I'll uh, leave you a positive review, blah, blah, blah. But 
it, it didn't cost anything to be nice to that person. Yeah, I, no. I didn't make anything off. I bought three of theirs for ninety nine cents because they bought one of mine for two ninety nine. So it's an equal trade. You make about a buck, whatever, off all three of them. Yeah, big deal. I, I well, you found know what? some I, people that buck means a lot to them, but also that review means so much more to more them to that. that you took the time to read their work or listen to their podcast. Yeah, like I can boast a lot of Twitter followers, but I found shows with way less Twitter followers that are I feel like just as good just as good you know like it doesn't yeah oh yeah it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what 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 kind of following they have uh bobby i want to ask too uh before we have to wrap it up a little birdie told us that you wrestled goldberg (laughs) yes i did i was actually victim number 67 (laughs) (laughs) number 67 did you get some good licks in did you get a couple good licks in uh, whatever he won 187 in a row whatever it was i was like victim number 67 in orlando florida Wow. So what did you hear about that? <laughs> no, we were just told. We uh, Jeremy told us that you, you fought that you fought yeah. Goldberg. Yeah, yeah, I did. And, you know, the thing about it back then, uh, he was so professional about it. And, and we went out there prior to, and, um, and since I didn't know what Jeremy had told you or not, but, but yeah, I took him off his feet. Um, I, I, I did. I was showing him a couple of things, and, and at the time, and Arn Anderson walked by and said, Bobby. And this was in Orlando in between settings, uh, between tapings. And he said, don't, don't take him off his feet. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Because Goldberg will let me do whatever because he didn't know at that time how much or how little to give someone. I mean, he had an idea because he's legitimate tough. I'm not taking away from that. Yeah. But anyway, so I said, okay, how about this? So um, I jumped over the top rope and I forearmed him. And he no sold it. And I formed again. He no sold it, and he beat the fuck out of me for the next uh, minute and a half or so. Um, I think I actually lasted about two, two and a half minutes. But the funny thing was, when he when he speared me, and, and he jackknifed me. So I took the pin. Of course, the office in back at the time, the the office back away from. How was it, Bobby? I was like, fine. He dropped me. No, he took care of me. Whatever. Well. When I got there, that was uh, uh, one of the agents asked me how he was, and I told him, you know, it was, everything is fine. Of course, I'm not going to bury the guy because it was really good. He took care of me. Yeah. But uh, when I got in the back, I was sitting there unlacing my boots. Nick Patrick, the referee of the match, walked up to me in the locker room and said, Bobby, what are you doing? I said, I'm just taking off my boots. He goes, I don't know, man. He goes, the way he speared you, he said, I think your boots are out there in the middle of the ring still. <laughs> 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 he speared the fuck out of me. I was in the middle of the ring selling. And I'm selling, I spun out to him. He speared me from the middle of the ring, the middle of the ring, all the way to the turnbuckle. And I do think my boots, as a matter of fact, my boots may still be in the middle of the the ring the way he speared me. (laughs) But very professional guy. And yeah, I was victim of 67. And I say that proudly because it was, it was an honor to help someone that professional, uh, that, that eventually reached that level that he did to, to help him get to that level. Uh, just one as a small part of someone else's success. And, and that means a lot to me, man. And I appreciate you guys bringing it up. So thank you very much. I'm glad Jeremy shared that with you. Thanks but for all, us, all respect to the offices and, and, and Goldberg and, and just doing my job, you know? Yeah. Give me pay me. What the fuck, you know? I know we got to wrap things up. Thank you. Just, yeah. real, really cool thing for me because I'm a, I'm a little younger, probably a lot younger than Rob. And <laughs> I'm a 90s kid, so I grew up in the middle of the WCW versus the WWF, and I was he all the way. WCW. I was all the way WCW. UCW, and I remember when Goldberg was undefeated, and he was my favorite wrestler because you're a kid and you wanted to vote for the guy that wasn't losing. <laughs> so I remember that. I <laughs> yeah. loved, I loved yeah. Stint, like all that. Like that's so that's awesome hearing that you were uh, number sixty-seven yeah, of Goldberg. Like. Gentlemen, let me tell you something else about Goldberg real quick. I I won't go into. I, I told a couple jokes in my, in my second book about him, uh, all, all, very respectfully, of course. But anyway, he is a straight up good dude. And I can't tell you how many times um, someone that I know personally was at an airport in a bigger city here or there, and they, they went up to him at 6 o'clock in the morning or whatever, and they said, hey, man, you know what? Uh, my buddy's a wrestler. He works for the same company you do. And they admitted my name, Bobby Blaze, and Goldberg would inevitably put me over saying, oh, yeah, I know Bobby. And I, I, that's probably happened before we even worked together. 
Um, and he would take the time at 6 o'clock in the morning at an airport to tell someone, you know, yeah, I know Bobby. Uh, tell him I said hello. Of course, we'd be seeing each other, whatever. But it would get back to me, and I went to Bill a couple of times, and I said, man, you know, remember he was in Lexington, Kentucky? And I'm sure he does or doesn't. You know, he's been in so many damn airports. But at the time, yeah. and, and I'd say a personal friend of mine said, you put me over by just saying something nice about me at 6 a.m. And I've been a lot of 6 a.m. flights or at the airport at 6 a.m. Let me say that, you know whatever flight you're trying to catch. Yeah. And uh, that's just professional. That's just, you know, uh, respect. And um, I had a lot of respect for him because even after that match, uh, you know, he come back and thanked me and asked me was everything okay because he understood the business at that point that uh, he said, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, it, it could be easily, easily me putting you over. And I'm like, no, man, I know, you know, I know my role to myself. But I'm like, no, I know. It's all good, man. But very, very good dude. So good future had a good person that you're here for, even though you're probably in a bandwagon of all the damn winners, not the losers. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, I love that. And then, and then Sting. Sting was like, I, I was a real big fan of Sting for whatever. I don't remember why, but I loved Sting. I don't know if he was on a winning yeah. streak or whatever, but he was, he was no, you second. Know, when I was there at the time, he, of course, he early on, he was a, he was a, uh, hell, he got that major, major push when he came in there. But while I was there, he only worked probably about six months. Because he was coming off an injury, I guess. And um, I only got to see him a couple of times. He only came to a couple of shows, like once in Atlanta uh, and maybe once to a pay-per-view. But a very, very good guy. You know, very nice, very courteous, professional, et cetera. But I was not around him a lot. But I was always a fan to the extent that, you know, he got that huge push and, and working early on with Ric Flair. And then eventually he becomes such a major, major star, you know, in the business. So, yeah, good choice there, too, man. Hell. What was that group that uh, they, we, that he was a part of? The NWL? Is that what they NWA? called it? NWA? Is that what it was? NWA? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what, yes. right. I remember that. They were white at one point and they went red. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's <laughs> some gang shit. Bobby, thank you so much for talking to us. It's always a, always a blast, my friend. Hey guys, I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate you having me on your podcast. I wish you much continued success with it. I know you're mm. doing very, very good. Anything I can help you promote on that, you know, on Twitter, just hit me up at Bobby Blaze 744 And again, guys, thank you so much, man. And I wish you both much continued success. And thank I appreciate you. your time so much. So, so best wishes. Life's best to both of you and to the podcast. Thank you. Send you, my friend, and thank you for every time you come on. You always give us a shout-out on your show. I do appreciate that so absolutely, much. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll talk soon, Bobby. Yes, sir. That was good. Have a good one, my friend. Yes, you all as well. <laughs>